Hey crew, what's up? What's good? It's your girl Jasmine back with another video on the channel. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Let's go. So today, 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 we got a Larry Berry video. You know, I'm trying to get to the videos that you are asking for, that you are wanting. Please continue to write them in the comments because sometimes I may miss it. Sometimes I may just can't do that video. So please just continue putting videos in the comments, suggestions in the comments on what to do. Um, so today, why Larry Bird is underrated. Do you think he's underrated? I do. But let's go ahead and get to this video. Like, comment, subscribe, notification bell. That being said, let's see why they think he's underrated. Widely accepted that Larry Bird is one of the greatest NBA players of all time and even sneaks his way into the GOAT mm. debate among many basketball circles. Mm. The thing is, I personally rank Larry Bird higher <laughs> than starting off with that. as he's currently sitting in the sixth spot on my all-time list and I even have him ranked slightly ahead of Magic Johnson, which is certainly a more uncommon opinion. Hold on. He said he got him in the sixth spot. I feel like I never asked you all this. Where is Larry Bird on your ranking list? all-time NBA players your top 10 your top 5 top 20 I don't care your top 75 where is Larry Bird on your list I think there's some major misconceptions to Bird's game that result in him not getting quite as much credit as okay. I believe he deserves and by the end of this video I think that I can convince some of you that Larry My Legend God. is in fact <laughs> underrated before we get into some misconceptions, Look at him. He let's way start back. with what most people already know about Bird, and I'll elaborate upon it. Over his 13-year career, Larry averaged 24.3 points on a stellar 56.4 true shooting percentage. Despite their talent-heavy history, Bird is the Celtics' all-time leading playoff scorer. So whether it was in the regular season or the postseason, he was always an efficient and lethal player. Dang, he on the wrist he was too. That's a one. legendary score and an incredibly efficient shooter. Larry is objectively one of the greatest three-point shooters of all time, as he's tied with Craig Hodges for the most three-point contest won in a career with a total of three. The thing is, Hodges participated in a total of eight three-point competitions, while Bird only participated in a total of four. That's embarrassing. He didn't even get, Hodges ain't even get 50% of his winnings. You participated in eight. He only won three. Larry participated in four and won three out of four. And I bet Larry was salty he didn't get four out of four. I know he was. Four. So he literally did the same amount of damage as the other all-time leader in half the amount of time. Exactly. On top of all of this, you really could make the argument that Bird is the most all-around efficient scorer of NBA history. If that seems like a stretch, then consider this. During some of his prime years, Larry went on a five-year stretch where he had 50, 40, 90 percentages. Only nine players in NBA history have achieved at least one season of 50, 40, 90 percentages. Yet Larry did it over a five-year stretch while putting up just about 28, 10, and 7 each night. The only player who was- Wait, did I miss- What was the 90 percentage in? Somebody let me know come close to that all-around efficiency over such a long period of time is actually Steve Nash. But the thing is, Nash was never primarily a scorer right. and averaged roughly half the amount of points that Larry did during his stretch. To efficiently score that many points on that kind of volume of all-around shot attempts is something that no one else has ever done as well as Larry Bird did. Again, maybe some of you didn't know the extent of how lethal Larry was as an all-around efficient scorer, oh. but I do feel like that's probably the most commonly understood aspect of his game. Now for the misconceptions and the details that definitely make Larry an underrated player. There are a lot of people, especially younger basketball fans, who believe that Larry was a subpar defender. This is incredibly inaccurate, as Bird wasn't just a good defensive player, but a great one. As a sick, you know, somebody told me that Larry Bird's defense is overrated, but his offense was underrated. Do y'all agree or disagree? Is that true or no? Y'all know the ones who was there during that time who watched him consistently, you know, y'all know. So I know y'all be able to tell me. I'm gonna ask it again. They said that his defense was overrated but his offense was underrated is that true 
6'9 small forward, he definitely had the size and length to frustrate the offensive opponent. Sure, there is the narrative that Larry was a slow and unathletic player, and thus it affected his defensive play. Was he This slow? is true to a certain extent, but it's also grossly exaggerated. Uh. What Larry did have are the most important traits of a great defensive player, which are hustle, heart, intelligence, effort, and availability. I love those. I love those. Because in my head, I was thinking the same thing. The first thing that came in my head was his his basketball IQ. His basketball IQ, his basketball IQ is insane. And that's just me watching from highlights. I can only imagine what people thought when they watched him live. You know what I'm saying? And then not only his basketball IQ, but his his consistency, his dedication, his discipline to winning, to playing as a team being a team player his sportsmanship you know what i'm saying like those characteristics goes a very long way larry was never lacking in any of these areas he always put in the work and he was incredible not only at reading the defenses but also at anticipating them larry made three nba all defense teams throughout the course of his career and even finished as high as third overall in the defensive player of the year running in 1983. He wasn't just a solid on-ball and help defender, but he was also a terrific Okay, go help. As Larry averaged a fantastic 1.7 steals per game over the course of his 13-year career. His best evening in this area came on February 18, 1985 against the Utah Jazz, when Larry dropped 30 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, and 9 steals in only 3 quarters of- 9 steals? First of all, first of all, first of all, 30 points. I'm probably going to say this wrong. I think he said 12 assists, 10 rebounds, 9 steals, and 3 quarters. 9 and 3 quarters? Against who? Because, obviously, it was someone they couldn't get, they couldn't hold on to the ball. 9 steals? I wonder how many, how many steals the team had as a total that night. ...of play. Due to them absolutely destroying the Jazz, Bird didn't play a second of the fourth quarter. Dang. To this day, the NBA record for the most steals in a single game is 11. So not only could he have easily been only the second player to ever achieve the quadruple double, but if Bird steals? had played the fourth, he might have been the record holder for the most steals in a game. Oh, yeah, you sure. have to be a great defensive player in order to be in a position to seize that record. On top of all of that, Bird led the entire NBA in defensive win shares a total of four times. That's the fourth most in NBA history. The only players ahead of him on that list are Tim Duncan, George Mikan, and Bill Russell. Y'all think uh, Larry was salty that he didn't play the fourth quarter? You think he was just, he was just like, ah, it's whatever. That is a remarkably short list of great defensive players. I'm not trying to say that Bird was on the level of someone like Dennis Rodman or Scottie Pippen, but to call Larry anything other than a great defensive player is either completely ignorant or is just plain disrespect towards his game. The other key area where people underappreciate Bird was his rebounding ability, as Larry was simply one of the greatest rebounding small forwards that the game has ever seen. He was aggressive and tenacious as he got as high as 11 rebounds per game in 1983. Qualities that I mentioned earlier, like his size, Look hustle, hustle. And intelligence, are also things that Dang. helped him as he battled on the boards. Over the course of his career, Larry averaged a whopping 10 rebounds per game, and when he was starting specifically at the small forward position, he averaged 9.5 rebounds per game. That's the third highest average among primary small forwards in NBA history. The only players ahead of him are Billy Cunningham and Elgin Baylor, who both played in the 1960s, which was easily the most inflated rebounding era of basketball history. So not only is Bird an underrated rebounder, not only is he objectively one Ooh. of the all-time great rebounders, but he's also arguably the greatest rebounder ever at his position. Oh. Y'all see that? Y'all see those boxing out skills? Those boxing out skills? Do y'all see that? I'm telling you. Today's NBA barely do any of that. They're like this. Ball watching. Ain't nobody putting a body on nobody. Ain't nobody diving on the floor. Ain't nobody doing that nowadays. Because why? 
NBA is not the same. It's so sad, and I freaking love basketball, and it's so sad to see stuff like that. You only see hustle like that if it's playoff time, if it's playoff time, or a team is trying to get into the playoffs. Excuse me. Um, and this makes me like sad that I wasn't um, born during that time to see stuff like this because I just I'm a huge basketball fan now. So imagine how much of a basketball fan I would have been if like I was born in this era, or if I was like a you know, like man. That's why I'd be, be jealous when people comment and be like, yeah, well, I went to Larry Bird game. It was amazing. Like, I would have loved to have been there beside you watching this. Like, absolutely love it. Along with all the other skills I talked about, Larry was also a remarkably gifted facilitator. But I won't delve into that much because like his shooting, I also think that's an area that a decent amount of people have a strong appreciation for. Ultimately, I think it's his solid defense and his elite rebounding that people underestimate, which is why I think he's underrated, regardless of the fact that people still refer to him as Larry Legend. Do you agree? Where does Larry Bird rank on your list of the greatest players of all time? Let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe. Yeah, definitely let me know where Larry ranks on your list um, and why he's that ranking. Um, let me know in the comments down below. And just to wrap it up real quick, I feel like Larry is definitely underrated just because I feel like he doesn't get the respect and flowers that he should. And I feel like he's not going to get it until he passes away, which is very, very sad that I have to say that. But it's also very, very true. And that's one thing I can't stand about this world is like somebody has to pass away for somebody to get their flowers. I cannot stand that. But Larry learning and growing and knowing more about Larry, it's like, bro, he should be every freaking where talked about on every freaking station, especially when it comes to when we have GOAT debates, when we have basketball debates, when we have in general sports debates. Like, Larry has done so much, and it's like a lot of people, if you was not born during that generation, a lot of people can't even tell you who Larry Bird is, you know, besides, you know, like it was random that I asked somebody like, hey, you know Larry Bird, right? And they're like, uh, yeah, the guy who needs to coach the Pacers. I mean, yeah, he did, but is that the first thing that came to your mind? How about the guy who played for the Celtics, the guy who helped bring basketball back with Magic, the guy who uh, was unbelievable on the court? Like, you know what I'm saying? You can go on and on and on with details about Larry Bird if you know the game, right? And then some people who do know the game can't even state some of the, some of the stats and things that Larry has done, you know? And it's just, it's sad. It's mind blowing too. But I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there, growing and learning, uh, just as much as the next. But I wish Larry was in the topic more when we talk about basketball and, um, you know, best players and stuff like that. Uh, just as much as Michael Jordan is, you know. I feel like Larry is definitely on that level. Um, yeah. But anyway, I'm rambling now. So let's go ahead. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all think of this video. Like, comment, subscribe, push that notification bell. Comment, talk to me down below. With that being said, see you guys next video.